You will not have any surprise. Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is one of the team-up pairs from March of the Machine. Their name is Catilda and Lier, and this is the Heart of Dawn. Catilda and Lier is a 3-3 human for 3 mana in Bant that looks like a human tribal spellslinger deck, but it's worth noting that none of the abilities here really encourage us to have a bunch of humans in play. Instead, what this text box really says is, all your humans are also Snapcaster made. So when we build this deck, we need to keep in mind that what we're really asking is what kind of deck wants to play a bunch of Snapcaster Mages. Just like Braids, who we call the Type B deck, our commander spells out how to get value, but not really any ways to win. So our win will likely come in the form of a combo or some other alternate win condition that they help us find. And like on Hello, we can't really afford to waste bodies, so when we are thinking about what humans to put in the deck, they need to be those humans that do the most work for us in addition to reloading our greatest hits from the graveyard. Since we still have to be able to cast those spells from our graveyards, much of what those humans will be doing is providing extra mana for us. Since Catilda and Lier need spells in the graveyard and humans in hand for their ability to work, we'll also want early ways to fill our graveyard and find humans. Eternal Witness, Farseek, and Nature's Lore are generally good cards, but none of them really do anything that we need them to. The curve in this deck is low enough that we can double spell without that much ramp, and we're already playing spells from the graveyard. If you were using the witness to grab a human though, stay tuned for much better options. Snapcaster Mage is cute, but a little too redundant here. All our humans are Snapcaster Mage, and most of them do a lot more than just be a Snapcaster Mage. Venser is really cool, but too much mana for us to hold up. We have better options for counter spells and for flash humans. Malevolent Hermit is just a better option here. Torrens and Adeline are great in a human tribal deck, but that's not what this is. Our commander specifically rewards us for casting human spells, so tokens don't interact with the deck at all, and for that reason we'll also be cutting Increasing Devotion. So what's our timeline? Turn 1, we'll play an Avacyn's Pilgrim, Noble Hierarch, and Nova Cleric to ramp us and be a one-sided wipeout for our opponents. Turn 2, we have a number of options, but our best ones are Commune with the Gods, Gather the Pack, and Winding Way to fill our graveyard with spells and find us our best creatures. We're also running Tracker's Instincts and Grapple with the Past in this slot for extra certainty that we hit this on turn 2. Turn 3, we'll play out Gatilda and Lear, so it's important that we took a hand that we can fix our mana with. Turn 4, we have a brilliant suite of humans with Baral, Chief of Compliance, Sten, Paranoid Partisan, and Deranged Assistant to fill our yard even more and help us cast any spells we played on turn 2 again. We're also playing Devoted Graph Keeper, Jeskai Elder, and Falaji Archaeologist to do more of the same. And we'll make sure we never run out of mana with Catilda, Dawnheart Prime, and Quandrix Apprentice to smooth out our land drops each turn and turn all our humans into mana dorks. If you haven't noticed yet, our game plan just naturally includes churning through the cards in our deck and dumping them in the graveyard, and that it does so remarkably efficiently, making this a natural candidate for a self-mill deck, but we'll see where that goes. By turn 5, our opponents will have developed a board presence of their own, so we'll start interacting with them through cards like Lagrella the Magpie, Lauren of the Third Path, and Anointed Peacekeeper. We have a whole suite of these human fiend hunter type effects like Lagrella to back her up at this stage, and with Dawnbringer Cleric, Monk Realist, and War Priest of Thune, we can snipe enemy enchantments that might do the same. If it seems strange to be casting 2 and 3 mana spells on turn 5, don't forget that we're also going back to the graveyard each turn and double spelling with what's in there as early as turn 4. This deck is crazy. Turn 6 and beyond, our bigger Haymaker humans start to hit the field with cards like Gale, Waterdeep Prodigy, Tygum, Ogretime Master, and Wizards of Thay to double up on our spells and make casting them easier. We're also playing Dikasia Dig Site Mentor, Factor Fiction, and Wind Rider Wizard to fill our hand and graveyard even more effectively to prepare for our endgame. We'll close out the game here in just so many ways, my favorite of which though is Candlekeep Inspiration, Blue's closest thing to a Crater Hook Behemoth. With the number of spells in our graveyard, this turns all our humans on board into towering monsters, and Mirror Entity will do the same, though it is much less exciting. 
Meanwhile, on the cards we've milled, a Lab Maniac will seal the deal with an alternate win con that feels just too natural to miss out on. The deck is consistent, resilient, and interactive. Our creatures push forward our game plan while shutting down enemy boards, and all our spells are reloading our hand while shoveling the deck into the graveyard. Even when the graveyard gets exiled, the efficiency with which it reloads is enough to refill it instantly, and having to fight both our onboard presence and our graveyard makes it hard to fight our unstoppable tide of advantage. Self-mill is a difficult strategy in these colors, but what it lacks in speed, it makes up for inefficiency. This is a very high 7 today. If you like this video, the next decks I'll be looking at can be found here, in no particular order, so if you see something you like, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!